everybody has a breaking point. We all succumb to the human condition. Mm -hmm. There there was a time like, I can't, you know, and he's like, BC, one day somebody's going to try to take something from you and you're going to have to choke that motherfucker. They can raise their voice. They could throw tantrums. They typically throw tantrums when they're surrounded by a lot of people. But mm -hmm. when we talk individually, they speak to me totally different. Mm -hmm. And I try to talk to people with like a lot of respect. And I'm not playing this up because it's going on the internet or whatever. But I think anybody that spent time with me knows I'm a fairly respect respectful person. Yeah. Um, but goes back to the way I was raised in jujitsu. You know, uh, half. Sweet guy. Also, but he will, yeah. Yeah, you don't disrespect the man. Yeah. I love one of his the one of his famous quotes, which is like, "Why do you train jujitsu? Well, maybe one day might somebody might take somebody something yeah. from you. You have to." Yeah, that that was taken from. I, I made th that post that mm -hmm. then kind of like they clipped out. But he came up to me one day and we were training and. I referenced that Valencia gym as like the half Gracie spot. We would always struggle because we only had like 50 members, mm -hmm. right? The attrition rate was super high. Like people fell off. People got injured because we trained so hard, right? And like I would go there from 11 to 1, hang out with Kurt, and then come back for from 5 to 7 or 5.30 to 7.30 mm -hmm. and then train 7.30 to 9.30. Now, if, if I could change it, I wouldn't change a thing because that really – was an impactful time in my life, but um, you learned a lot. And the point I was trying to make was like you had to want to be there, you know. Not that. And now we're living in twenty twenty three. People are like that's abusive. You know, that's not a safe space. Like, dude, we're we're trying to be the best in the world, and we wanted to be tough. And we were in a room with one of the toughest human beings in the world. Like. I want to circle back to that, but keep going. Yeah. <laughs> so I forgot how I, I went down that. that Cause route. I was talking about like, uh, oh, the one BC of the quote. quote. Yeah. yeah. So I cried uh -huh. a lot in training. Like, I'm not scared to say that. Like everybody there cried. The major difference of how we cried though, like we're sweating, drenched in sweat, but we'd be crying at the same time. Mm -hmm. Not, crying in the sense of emotions but like you're so exhausted right and everybody has a breaking point we all succumb to the human condition mm -hmm. there, there was a time like i can't you know and he's like bc one day somebody's gonna try to take something from you and you're gonna have to choke that motherfucker and uh that clicked i don't even know i'm getting emotional that was weird um <laughs> maybe just reminiscing on, on those times, but uh, like in every tough fight, fuck, this is weird. Um, I, I can hear, hear that, you know, I don't even, Jesus, this is embarrassing, but, but uh, I've been having a heavy week. Um, but yeah, so, uh, I used to quote how when Instagram started a lot and then mm -hmm. it like took off and now it's like this big poster and it's been good for his company. Yeah. Um, yeah. Sorry. Man, I, I really wanted to circle back to that moment because I feel like you definitely try to pass on that energy when we were like the green mat days in FTCC and we would have like those hard training times. And like I said, I think we had this conversation prior. Like there was days where like I did not like you. <laughs> You were not my favorite person. You were like my enemy that day. And I remember like similarly, I was having a heart like fucking Nelson. Nelson. <laughs> Sorry. He was just like badgering me one day. I was like so tired of him and then came in and had like a really tough practice, like really tough practice. And that quote where you said, you know, these days, these kids, they're they're looking for a safe space but sometimes you need unsafe spaces to yeah. make yourself into not just a bad motherfucker but somebody who's resourceful who can come through hard times yeah. and i think about any of those hard practices and there's other parts of my life were that were really really hard that were difficult for me to come through and i think about those hard practices and sometimes 
like those moments where you like really pushing us past our breaking point past what we thought we were capable and sometimes it felt unsafe but in reality you were safe like you got your teammates there you got people who are really trying to bring out the best in you and um and I really like am so grateful for that time because those are those are growing moments I think kids nowadays need that like there's all this trauma that people are experiencing right now what whatever it is these hard times instead of letting it being a moment that breaks you allowing it to be a moment that shapes you yeah how do you get kids and more importantly their parents to go the opposite direction from safe spaces i think it starts with the parents because depending on what generation that parent is from uh they'll they'll make sure they'll push their kids to go in that direction that's how my mom was my parents were definitely like that but and so I I sought it out like anytime I experienced I would have to thank my mom for like raising me the way she did because I would not have been able to handle one of Darren's practices when he's really on it you know what I mean and like you can ask some of the people who've met my mom they're like I understand why you handle Darren as your coach because I met your mom and she's pretty fucking tough <laughs> but like yeah like I think it starts with the parents uh, if it doesn't start with the parents it's going to be very difficult to maintain it's going to ha- be ha- it's going to have to be something within the kid and some of their peers or other mentors and influencers that they meet along the way that make them want to challenge themselves in that way because parents ultimately are going to be the ones that are going to instill or break habits and behaviors for that person. Mm. You, um, you kind of really touched on it there at the end for me. It's really about what is the way that kids can be convinced to be outside their comfort zones and divorced of any sense of normal security that they've been told or had formulated around themselves as as an illusion. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think that you deal with much more motivated kids in general seeking out jujitsu. I think that that's not a normal kid. I think I deal with much more normal kid Mm -hmm. group and have and those folks are not really meant for jujitsu in the way you guys are describing it. No, it would require way too much. No, those kids need it more than anything. Fair point. I yeah. totally agree with you. The in- the di- the issue I'm kind of having in my head is where is that gap bridged? Yeah. The people who actually need it are the least likely to get it. Yes, I I definitely um, there's I'm not sure if Guardian Gym is still doing this. I know they still have that um like that fundraiser that they do um to for certain gyms and programs to sponsor like heavily restructured i think yeah because i'm training at caleb's place now and i'm not sure if sasha's still there but they they are the ones who kind of founded that i believe and it was where adults would pay for memberships and then the kids would uh, train for free and they're out there they their guardian gym was out there on br- right off broadway in oakland right in the heart of the community groups that need those those type of programs and there's still some kids um who grew up out of that program who still train with them at steadfast today up in uh, richmond california um but um yeah, I saw that Guardian is still alive. It's just restructured in a different way. Yeah. I mean, they've got Guardian gyms in Hawaii. I think House is a Guardian gym now. Mm-hmm. You know, like, I think it's more of, like, a program to get maybe at-risk youth or, like, maybe ones that can't afford, you know, payment. There's some way, like, if they have a certain amount of adults paying members, mm-hmm. they, like, somewhat sponsor them. Yeah. yeah. So that it, it's definitely good, but... You know, um, too, one thing that I think has changed for kids getting involved today is the popularity of jiu-jitsu. Like, jiu-jitsu mm-hmm. is far more popular, not in the sense of, like, a bad way popular, but it's more common, like, n- commonly known about. Mm-hmm. Like, the UFC is on, like, every day, right? Um, or MMA is, and I think that kind of adds to that. But, 
definitely to get a kid to stick with jujitsu too is is a challenge. You know, maybe yes. past blue belt because blue belt's cool. Yeah. One to two years, maybe. You know. And like for a kid to go to blue belt, that's kind of pretty high for them because they start they have like a different uh, belt system, right? Yellow, yeah. orange, and green, and some other colors. Over that time span, is it more important to be teaching life lessons or techniques? If you could only have them a short duration of time, I think it depends on the school and the program. Yeah, and well, I guess it comes out to like, what do they want to get out of it? 